What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Generic Wolf. Welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts to Die Bundesländer of Germany, explained by Geography Now. Okay, so, uh, people enjoyed my Germany vid a lot, and I appreciate that, of course. And, uh, basically, a lot of them told me that I should, uh, since I reacted to Germany, I might as well react to the states of Germany, explained. So, without further ado, let's just get right into it. What, what makes these states special? What makes Bavaria special from, from Hamburg? Uh, what makes the Rhineland uh, special to uh, East Germany, the communist, communistized Germany? Well, let's find out. Paul? So as you know, we are working on the scripts for the next few country episodes, which means this is going to have to be a filler week. Heavily, heavily, heavily requested. This one is going to be on the a little sick. or Bundesländer of Germany. Bundesländer. I can already name a lot of them, like Bavaria. Germany is a powerhouse nation. Obviously, it is the largest economy in Europe, and it holds a significant role of geopolitical activity that links an entire continent. As you'll soon find out, each state in Germany is... No, I was just kidding. Of course, I know more. It's like, it's like Bavaria, uh, uh, it's Brandenburg, um, Thuringia, Lower and Upper Saxony, uh, the Tsarland over here, the Rhineland, the Frankfurt... Uh, the, did I get them all? Bremen? Bremenhaven? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, see, I know them. I know all of them. It's pretty unique and diverse in their own way. They each kind of have their own specialty and some have unique dialects. Before we get into this though, I just want to let you know that one of my favorite sponsors is working with us once again, Satera. Let's, let's just, let's just uh, do, where, where did we go? There we go. Man, I totally recommend you check them out. I've played this no, game. It's don't. great. It's worth it. I don't it. care. Thank no. you, Satara, for sponsoring Geography Screw you. All right, and so with that being said, let's <laughs> just jump into the 16 Bundesländer of Germany. First oh, one, 16. baden württemberg yeah, capital totally Stuttgart. This is like the other southern state besides Bavaria. It was formed by the joining of three other former There's states. There's more than these. It's kind of like the luxury car just state. Bavaria? You know, they have the headquarters of Mercedes-Benz and Porsche. Lots the of cars manufacturing I'll never have going down here. It's very busy. They're also known for having... Having the Black Forest, where all those fairy tales were inspired off of by the Brothers Grimm, which also plays into the unique Swabian, Swabian culture that they're known for down here. Swabians have possibly I explained the, in the weirdest last dialect in all of Germany. A lot of Germans can't even understand them, and it incorporates a lot of weird, Damn. unique festivals. A lot of times <laughs> they wear these costumes. Uh, one, this one girl that I talked to who knew German very well, she lived in Germany her entire life. I talked to her, and she says, I sound like somebody from... Uh, from Stuttgart, from this region that has weird, a funky accent. My German, at least. She says, my German's pretty good, but it sounds like you're more from the south, from like Bavaria or uh, from Austria. And if there's like a text that would pop up, I'll probably read it in German, and the Germans can tell me in the comments what do I sound like, a northern German or a lower German based off of the fairy tales that came from here. Switzerland is like their best friend. They really just kind of get each other. A lot of Swiss people come over and travel to this area of Germany. And they're known for being really smart with their Rich. money and handling it very well, which also kind of means a lot of people think they're the kind of stingy. Of That's Bosnia. like the stereotype. Geography Jessica it's says good to be it's a sacrilege to throw stuff out, even if it's a broken TV or something. Bavaria or Bayern, capital Sounds Munich. like the place for this me. This is the largest state in size and the second largest in terms of population. It's kind of like the home of all those, you know, perpetuated German. Uh, I don't know if he's gonna mention it, but Bavaria is one third of the German economy. That's what that's what that that should tell you something about Bavaria. And stereotypes that became famous through American culture, you know, Lederhosen, Dirndls, those big one liter jugs of beer, half timber houses, <laughs> that's what you I know, think stuff of. like that. Reason being because after World War II, this place was occupied by the Americans, and whatever they saw, they just kind of put in media. They're kind of like yeah, the most sense, independent out of all the German states. I, I mean, didn't know they that. even had their own king at one point. He went crazy and drowned himself. They have more of like a Catholic background, and Austria is kind of like their conjoined twin. Like they. Get Bavaria used to be its own state back in the day. Country. They get along really well with Austria. Beautiful mountains here. In fact, the tallest mountain in all of Germany, Zugspitze, is found here as well. And no shocker, they are really, really, really known for beer. There's like over 4,000 breweries My here. God. The oldest yeah, one in little. all of Germany is also found here. And you know, all Germans kind of have their own the opinions oldest one in the on world. Bavaria. Otto von Bismarck even once said the Bavarian is... What did you What did you say? Bon? Otto von Bismarck? That's his uh, like retarded cousin, I guess. <laughs> Germans kind of have their own opinions on Bavaria. Otto von Bismarck even once said the Bavaria. Otto von Bismarck. Okay, apparently that's his like retarded uh, cousin or something of Otto von Bismarck. Uh, he is literally, by the way, for those who don't know, uh, I kind of base my political views 
off of him. Not, I'm not saying like uh, we, uh, everything should be uh, you know happening with uh, blood and iron and what else, whatever else he said. But his real politic is what really inspires me in my political views. Uh, I'm not really like a conservative or a liberal or anything. I kind of like do what I, I would do, what needs to be done, and what is realistically able to done. Therefore, real politics. Berlin is the link between human and Austrian. Berlin, also the capital of <laughs> okay. Germany, is not only the largest city in Germany, but it's also one of the three city states, as in cities that are considered states. Now, Hamburg, when I asked a lot of you German geography to Berlin. describe Berlin, a lot of you, even from Berlin, kind of said something along the lines of, Ugh, why do we even have this city? In 2003, former mayor Klaus Wolverite described Berlin as poor but sexy. It's pretty much the only capital city in all of Europe that costs more than it earns as in the entire country's gdp could be higher if berlin didn't exist and it's like you either love it or hate it geography mara Did says you know that <laughs> it's like the city where germans go to find themselves starving artists aspiring edm and techno musicians trying to make Rammstein. a point while unemployed <laughs> yeah, but seriously the city does have some cool sites colorful art scene what's weird though is you can still kind of see the distinction between east and west berlin because it was split after the war and it's kind of like a weird place where capitalism and communism coalesce in one location. I mean, I guess Berlin is kind of like the rebel punk rock teenager who locks himself in his room because his parents just don't understand him. Brandenburg, capital, Potsdam. Sounds like me. <laughs> Jagerpeep Jakob says, people joke that this state is the dead zone that surrounds Berlin. Berlin has more people than the entire state of Brandenburg. This is the first of the five states that make the former East Germany before the unification. Uh, Brandenburg is kind of where like Germany started. Well, Prussia, technically. The Brandenburg and Prussia like fused together under under the Hohenzollern uh, dynasty, and that's where like Prussia started to like you know expand through many of the uh, conquests. And we all know that Prussia basically formed the German Empire. So kind of kind of started there. like the slow to get things done state as in their airport was always supposed to be done this year but they always say that like every year and it's been like 10 years uh, like, are you sure that bosnians uh aren't, aren't the ones that are <laughs> that work here because uh in bosnia it took us 20 years to build a 20 kilometer road no, i'm not even joking look it up 20 years for like 20 kilometer or was it like 10 years for 20 kilometer roads either way one or two kilometers every freaking year that's how fast we build. We are damn fast. We're freaking like Chinese building. <laughs> the opposite of Chinese builders. Let's see, lots of former Prussian history here. Lots of cool stuff to see here though, like the Roman baths or the Cottbus castle, the Anderhavel city museum. They actually have like these cool medieval walls from the 14th century. One of the most notable sites being the palace of Saint Souci. Lots of Eastern European- Saint Souci. Saint Souci in uh, French, that would kind of mean like without worries. Uh, and that was actually the house of where like uh, Frederick the Great was or the palace of Frederick the Great. Especially Polish. I mean, they are on the border with Poland. They're kind of like the sidekick of Berlin that like tags along and wants to join his punk rock band, I guess you could say. Bremen. This is actually another city state. However, it's more of like two. It's broken up into Bremen and Bremerhaven. This is the smallest and least populated so one state, state of Germany at only about 660,000 people. Back in the day, it was labeled as a free Hanseatic city back when the Hanseatic League was a thing. That's a mm -hmm. whole other thing we could talk about. Lots of marine culture here. Actually, people who want to become sailors come to Bremen and Bremerhaven. Beck's beer comes from here as well as chocolate beer, both of which many Germans hate. Let's see what else do they have. <laughs> they have the Bremer Stadt Music Content statue. They have the only Oh really come on. You can you can read it. Uh Stadt Musikanten. They have the only microgravity tower in Europe where you can experience nine seconds of weightlessness, eight mummified bodies in glass coffins, and because a reasons. memorial block in the street dedicated to a female serial killer. Charming. But yeah, you know, Bremen is just kind of like this unique, quaint, yet Creepy. always kind of competing with Hamburg state. Which brings us to... Hamburg. Hamburg is ah, the last the of money the three money. city states, State. and it is pretty much the richest state there in all of Germany. Yep. <laughs> you gotta love these guys because people from Hamburg are called Hamburgers. Sometimes they're called the Venice of the ha, North Sea ha. because they have all these neighborhoods that are separated by canals and bridges. Like Bremen Rich and Bremerhaven, they have a harbor built on the Elbe River, which gives them access to the sea, and they have a huge maritime culture, even though they are technically not on the sea. And they are getting quite a bit of attention these days because Hamburg is kind of like the IT capital of Germany right now. A lot of you have also mentioned that they have the most famous red light district in all of Germany. The adult themed Reaper Bond. I did not know that. Lots of cool sites you can see
see here though. Oh, and they love fish here. Kind of like Eight the euros. Techie rich guy who loves his fish. <laughs> Next up, Hess or Hessen, capital Wiesbaden. Much of today's <laughs> Hess like state belonged to the former Hessen. Hessen duchy back in the day. It was an independent state all the way up until 1871. And they are most famous for Frankfurt. It has more skyscrapers than any other city, and it has the busiest airport in all of Germany as well. And it is kind Probably of like Europe. the business hub of Germany. It's home to so or many Heathrow. corporate banks and financial institutions. Also home to the German Stock Exchange. And Goethe, one of the most important writers in German history, is from Frankfurt. When well, they love apples, especially drinking it in various ways. They love apple cider. There's even a fountain that shoots apple wine at you. But yeah, Hess, Hessen is kind of nice. like a, it's like the financial management brother of the family. Lower Saxony, capital Hanover. It's the second largest state in terms of area, and it's called Lower Saxony because of the elevation, not because of the geographic location on the map. Get Keep that in mind. This state gets along very well with the Netherlands. This state kind of has like two cultures, the Plain Saxons and the Frisians, whom are related to the Frisians in the Netherlands. It's kind of like the country farmland area of Germany. They host a lot of fairs, like the World Fair Expo in 2000. However, interestingly enough, you can also hear quite a bit of Plattdeutsch spoken here as well, which is the dialect that the Amish speak in the Americas. It's also the headquarters of Volkswagen, and they also have Volksburg, which is the city with the highest GDP per capita in the entire country. It's like the richest city. Mecklenburg, Vopolmen, capital. Yeah, wasn't it like just built uh, like around like a Volkswagen or factory or something? Schwerin. This is actually the poorest state in Germany, and it is the second. F I would not consider 27,000 euros a year GDP per capita poor. Was that purchasing power parity or. Because that's important that you get it a GDP per capita. Don't say purchasing power parity. That's what you really have to look at because Bosnia's pur purchasing power parity is only like. 12,000 euros. So half of this, that's kind of what life is like in uh, Bosnia. This is actually the poorest state in Germany, and it is the second former East Germany state. As the name implies, Vopolmen, it was part of the former area known as Pomerania, Pomerania which, mm -hmm. yes, that's where the Pomeranian dog comes from. Some people joke that I it should one. be called Mecklenburg Poland, because it has a lot of Polish influence <laughs> right next to Poland. They even share and split this island with them called Uzedom. It is very rural and sparsely populated. It has a lot of farmers and old people, in fact, it is disputably the oldest state in all of Germany. Tons of lakes here, though. The largest lake completely within Germany is actually found here as well. They also have the largest island in all of Germany. Beautiful Vegan. beaches, uh, cool places with, like, chalk cliffs. But yeah, mecklenburg vopolmen ah, It's kind of like uh, the old angry grandpa that yells at the kids for running on his lawn. North Rhineland, Westphalia. Capital, Dusseldorf. This is like the big daddy of Germany. Apparently, it's not Dusseldorf. It's Dusseldorf. Okay, whatever. Germany. It's the most populated with about 17 million. It's the powerhouse industrial capital of Germany. Much of its economy was built off of coal mining in the beginning, and today they have more companies and factories than anywhere else in Germany. People here have Probably a deep-rooted Catholic culture. They love celebrating Carnival. The two biggest cities, Dusseldorf and Cologne, are always like competing with each other. There's really cool Frank Gehry architecture in Dusseldorf. Cologne has the Cologne Cathedral, obviously, and Cologne is kind of like the media capital of Germany. Much of the major studios can be found here but yeah overall the this <laughs> in bosnia let me tell you what the the capital of like media and industry and uh fashion and everything is sarajevo basically sarajevo for everything here in bosnia hey it's all in one in just one one city state is kind of like the partying dad of germany rhineland palatinate capital mainz this is kind of like the younger brother of rhineland westphalia except they love wine like it's often argued that the best german wine can be found in this state there's a lot of historical sites and castles, especially ones that date back to the days when France was always like invading and taking over. They also have the last bastion of Roman presence north of the Alps in the town of Trier. It's also the uh, birthplace of Karl Marx. They are known for liverwurst. It's kind of like the loyal sidekick of Rhineland-Westphalia. Saarland, capital Saarbrücken. Besides the city-states, it is the smallest state in area. Basically, the people here are like Frenchy Germans. The area was <laughs> occupied by so France get the fuck out of World there. War II. <laughs> And they were actually their own independent state all the way up until 1957 when they decided to go Panama? back to Germany. Which explains why the people here are really good at speaking French. Jacobi Fiona 
Carl says they are like the long lost uncle that you don't know how you're related to and speaks French. The most notable site though probably being the Foklingen Ironworks. It's a massive rusting steel plant that is now a UNESCO heritage site. Today it holds a museum, hey, we have a lot of those center, and Mali. an auditorium for concerts. I wouldn't be surprised if heavy metal concerts were a big thing here. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> Saxony, capital, Dresden. This is the third former East European state. Geography Thorsten explains it pretty well when he says, the Saxons are one of the oldest German tribes with having a lot of political influence in the early times of the Holy Roman Empire and with some of them even creating something of what we now know today as England. Hence why many British people say that they're Anglo-Saxon and why the English language is classified as a Germanic language. It kind of started here. Uh, English is technically nowadays more referred to as a Germanic romantic hybrid language. What I mean by romantic is basically all the romance languages like French and uh, Latin, sometimes even Greece, uh, influenced it a lot. Uh, so technically it would be classified as a Germano-Romanic language. Still technically a Germanic language, but since uh, French like uh, influenced it so much, we, we just call it a hybrid language. Interesting, right? This place is kind of known for having two things. We studied this in college. And very right-wing politics. Yeah, they get along really well with Czechia slash the Czech Republic, whatever you like calling it. They have a minority group called the Sorbians, a Slavic people group, kind of related to the Czechs, and it's actually a language that is protected by the German government. Nonetheless, Not really though, Serbians, I've been told that the people here are really super nice. They have, like, that East German hospitality. It's just, you know, they're different from the rest of Germany, especially Lower Saxony, like the two Saxonies have nothing to do with each other. Saxony and Halt, capital Magdeburg. This is the fourth former East German state. It's often said that they call themselves the state that wakes up earlier. This is basically kind of like Saxony's chiller little sister. It's also the birthplace of Martin Luther, who started the Protestant Reformation. Baroque composer Good Handel <laughs> was born here. Uh, it is home to the Bauhaus movement, and they love Christmas here. They have a huge Christmas market and produce a lot of nutcrackers. When I was told they are home to the mountain of Brocken, which on April 30th becomes the site of the Walpurgisnacht, a night of dance. Walpurgisnacht. Sing with witches based off of the story by Goethe. Schleswig-Holstein, capital Kiel, Weird. named after the two duchies that worked together for centuries. It is the only bi-coastal state in Germany with coasts along the North Sea and the Baltic. And it's basically like the Denmark of Germany. There's a lot of Danish people here, Danish-speaking people here, and it's actually a protected, recognized language. Uh, you can greet people here by saying moin moin. And the cool thing is, on the North Sea coastline on the west side, they have the largest cohesive tidal flats in the world. A natural world heritage site twice a day the tide recedes exposing a massive mud flat of course no surprise fishing and sailing are huge out here they actually have a huge sailing competition every year yeah the people here are kind of known for being like tall animal herding people that Taller are really me. quiet like they don't talk much and finally hey, Turingia like me. <laughs> or Turingen, capital Erfurt, the last and final state of former East Germany this place is probably most famous for the city of Weimar as geography Thorsten says it is the home of Johann Wolfgang Goethe and Friedrich von Schiller. Everybody's Their Goethe. works in the so-called Sturm und Drang era Sturm. were so influential Sturm. that it was manifested in a saying about Germany. Germany is the country of poets and thinkers. They were kind of like the Shakespeare's of Germany back in the day. Much of their writing actually influenced a lot of words and phrases for modern German that is spoken today. The composer Bach was born here. You can see his house. And interesting, they have a lot of caves here as well, like these. And uh, they're known for having really good food here as well. They have like these potato dumpling things. Things, and all Germans love Thuringian style bratwurst. It's a, uh, it's, it's. They're famous for it. So there you go. Those you are the sixteen bun. states of Germany. However, a lot of you guys also mentioned two other things: the Spanish Balearic island Mallorca. A lot of Germans jokingly call this the seventeenth Bundesland. This is a hot Tourism. spot for Germans, and they flock to this place all year round. Tons of Germans already live here. A lot of the street signs and shop signs and billboards are written in German people have lived hey we're reading we're writing our signs a lot in Sarajevo in uh, Arabic because there's so many Arabic people nowadays in Bosnia on this island never learning a word of Spanish and they've been fine uh, yeah the Germans love this island uh, back in Cold War times Cuba kind of like said oh we're gonna give you this island Cayos Blanco del Sur named Ernst Talmond Island but then like Cuba was like oh it was just like a symbolic thing we didn't actually give it to you and then Germany was 
like, eh, yeah, fine, whatever, keep that island. So that is it. So yeah, I mean, in conclusion, for Germany, cool. you gotta hand it I knew to them. The they've gone thing. through so much in the past century, and it's what almost about miraculous how much they've moved forward. Whether you're Bavarian or mecklenburg vorpommern hope you like this video. Thank you. Danke schön. Stay cool. Stay tuned. Okay, so uh, I did the video. Uh, that was that was interesting. Okay, there are li some other videos on the states of other you know countries, and I will do those, of course. And I think I forgot to do some Flag Fridays for Macedonia and for Montenegro. I'm gonna have to do a video, a separate video on that as well. But um, I think that'll have to do for now. Uh, thank you all for watching, and as always, take care.